All right, everybody, welcome back. Welcome back. Now, I know that um, the title of this video was um, maybe a bit startling, perhaps like you might think, oh, clickbait, clickbait. Well, hold on, hold on. Slow down. Let me explain. So what we've got here. <clears throat> uh, here in actual Bohemia, in the Czech Republic, um, there is a growing movement known in the Czech language as, uh, pardon me if I butcher this to any Czechs watching, um, I believe it's pronounced something like Chcipel Pes, which roughly translates to dog died, or in a more colloquial slang expression, as it was explained to me, is more like the dog kicked the bucket or uh, the dog uh, bought the farm, something like that. Um, <clears throat> now, what the heck does that even mean? Like, the dog died, the dog kicked the bucket? Well, it's a bit of a play on words. So, chtsipel, uh, let me say it correctly, let me at least try to say this correctly, uh, basically is, you know, died, or it, it, colloquially it died, it kicked the bucket, whatever. And pes, this word, P-E-S, means dog. But it's also, like I said, it's wordplay in that P-E-S is an acronym, in this case, meaning, uh, once again, I apologize if I butcher your language, uh, any of you Czechs out there, uh, proti epidemitsky uh, system, P-E-S, basically meaning they are anti-epidemic system here in the Czech Republic. Well, let's talk about it. What's going on? Why would they be against the epidemic system, right? you know, the government control and the government restrictions going on to prevent the epidemic, the pandemic, whatever you wish to say, here in the Czech Republic? That's what we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> so as you can see here, I am actually on their website. Right up here you can see chatsipelpes.cz, or says Z, whatever if you're Czech. Um, and you can see they got political movement, creating a program, elections 2021. Yeah, keep that in mind. That's very interesting. And some uh, several other things to talk about up here, but we're not worried about that. Let's take a look. So right here, opening sentences, dog died. We will open the Czech Republic freedom and responsibility. It's difficult to argue against that. That sounds like a pretty reasonable uh, thing to discuss and something worth talking about. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Who are we? So um, Incitiava Chetsipulpes, so the initiative, basically, the movement, uh, was created as a challenge by entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs from gastronomy. Our goal was to point to the absurdity of the government's actions. We did not want to respect the regulation of changing the opening hours from 22 to 20, meaning 10 p.m. to 8 p.m. for those of you in the United States. And so we said enough. We have left our businesses open. And since the 9th of January, 2020, we have been connecting businesses from all sectors and looking for common ways to deal with this difficult situation. We do not deny the, da the dangers associated with COVID-19 disease, but we do not deny other threats associated with government measures. So let's talk about this. What's going on? This doesn't seem so bad. You have to close the, the hours removed from 10 to 8 p.m. That's not a big deal. Well, this is a little bit old, actually. This is old news. Because actually what's going on that you're not going to see on this page is that on December 18th, yeah, you're hearing that right, December 18th, all restaurants, hotels, cafes, and many other small businesses were forced to close by the Czech government. So if you're a restaurant owner, you've basically been out of business except for the occasional um, takeaway meal or uh, I guess Uber Eats. That's pretty much the only business they've got right now since December 18th. Okay, like I said, this was old. This was before December 18th. This this changing of the hours that restaurants had to close by eight o'clock. 
that's old. So how did all this get started? What happened? Well, like I said, way back in December, all the restaurants had to close. Now, they were, they were closed previously, they opened back up, and there was a spike in corona cases, so they closed again back in December. So, what caused this massive movement, this, this movement of people saying, we've got a name, we've got a, a, a group, what happened? Well, that's what we're going to take a look at. <clears throat> so, here on this, um, this news article, it's a little bit old. As you can see here, it says January 21st, so it's a few weeks old. But uh, Czech restaurateurs seek political party status. Yeah. It's kind of genius. I'll show you. So, right here. Let's start with this article. Frustrated with the ongoing COVID-19 restrictions imposed by the Czech government, a group of restaurateurs are attempting to form their own political party. So bear in mind, this is a few weeks old. It says, um, this past weekend, Interior Minister Jan Hamacek took to Twitter to state that pandemic restrictions imposed on the general public do not apply to political parties. Rules for thee, not for me. Do as I say, not as I do. We get to meet because we're the government. Screw you. So, of course, this statement prompted many struggling restaurant owners to form a coalition formerly known as Chtsipelpes. The dog died. The government is killing people, so they kind of have this little joke on wordplay here. Let's continue. This loophole would essentially mean political cells being formed inside restaurants and pubs. It is through this political party exemption that mass gatherings of people would likely occur in the name of political party meetings. Can we get a golf clap for this? I'm going to give them a golf clap. That's, yeah, I like it. Find a loophole, exploit it. They want to shut you down, find a way to prevent it. Form a political party and say, well, I'm going to use the rules you've set to keep my business open. Sounds good to me. Why not? What's good for the goose is good for the gander. Am I right? <clears throat> so, let's continue. Um, organizers from the group gave a press conference on Tuesday. Among the group, a spokesman named um, Yirji Janacek. <laughs> Czech is a brutal language. Uh, he stated, the measures of this government are not working and impoverishing this country and taking people's hope. It's a valid point. The group also says they are frustrated with a government provision called the COVID Gastro Program, which currently provides financial assistance only to businesses that are following government rules and restrictions. So if you opened your business once, you decided, man, I'm in trouble. I'm facing serious financial hardships. I got to make some money somehow. You opened your restaurant. The cops came by. They shut you down. You're off the program. You get nothing. You lose, as Willy Wonka would say. <clears throat> so the spokesman for the ministry gave us some bullshit, right? That's basically what happened. She she gave some uh, some lip service. Here's what the gastro program does, though. It says um, businesses that do adhere to the restrictions are entitled to a subsidy of 400 Czech crowns per day for each employee. Now, for those of you that have never been to the Czech Republic, you're thinking, wow, 400 sounds pretty good. I'd love 400 bucks a day. Eh, sorry, Slick, slow down. 400 Czech crowns is a little bit less than $20. It's around, depending upon the day and how good the economy is doing, it's somewhere between $18 and $19 for each employee per day. That's it. So if you're a small pub, a small restaurant, let's say you're some little corner restaurant, a corner bar, you've got, uh, I don't know, 10 tables, five employees, one guy in the back in the kitchen, four waiters or waitresses, $100 a day? $100 a day. That's all they're getting for a small pub. Now, okay, let's say you're a slightly bigger pub and you, oh man, we've got 10 employees. Wow, okay. Whoa. 
you got $200 a day. Do you really think that's going to keep any business open? If you're trying to pay rent, you're trying to pay mortgage on the property you've got? No. You're going to be bankrupt within a matter of a few months. And that's the problem. They have to open up. They have to break the rule in order to make money so that they don't go bankrupt because the government isn't giving them enough money to not go bankrupt. But if they are caught breaking the rules, they get nothing. Please, someone explain to me how this is not tyranny. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'll wait for a while, but not too long. I can only hold my breath for just a couple of minutes. You know, so if you got an answer, feel free, but I'm pretty sure you don't have a good one. So let's continue. <clears throat> So Mr. Janicek feels that the country should open up again and allow businesses to operate normally while the government <clears throat> does their job. Oh, it focuses on protecting vulnerable groups. Oh, yeah, does their job. Sounds good to me. That's what the government should be doing. It's their job to protect vulnerable groups. It's a restaurant owner's job to sell food, right? I mean, that, that's what I thought. I mean, I, I mean, what do I know? I'm just some dude on the internet. I mean, I could be wrong, but pff, who knows? Uh, so, the group says they have no aspirations to run in elections. However, there is now a petition circulating in each of the participating restaurants and shops in order to gain enough signatures to become a political party. According to the Ministry of Interior, at least 1,000 signatures are required to earn such a designation. No mass events have been planned by the group yet. Now remember, <clears throat> yet, that's a key word because, as I said, as I showed you a few minutes ago, this is about three weeks old now. Large events have been planned. From what I've read and what I've seen, there will be a big protest on Valentine's Day in Prague. Um, that should be fairly interesting for those of you in Prague. Uh, maybe check it out. Bring a camera, record it, send it to me. I'll post it. Post it on your own Facebook or whatever website you've got, whatever social media you've got. If you want to be there, take some recordings, do some videos, send them to me. I'll post it too. Should be interesting. Should be fun. Um, I do also know for a fact they do have more than 1,000 signatures at this point. Um, it says at least 1,000 signatures. Signatures. They have more than 1,000 from an art, a more recent article I read. Unfortunately, that more recent article did not go into many details about the uh, movement itself and how it got started, so I'm not going to use it. So let's continue. Uh, critics of this initiative feel that the group is neglecting neglecting to consider that according to recent reports, fully opened restaurants can accelerate the spread of the virus three times faster than, say, fitness centers. Well, if that's the case, why are fitness centers closed and under the same restrictions as restaurants? I mean, once again, I don't know. I'm just some dude on the internet. What do I know? Anyways, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, blah, 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 blah. This is all nonsense. The rest of it's just extra information that's not terribly important. So let's go back to the original website that I showed you, the homepage of the group, Chetzipel <clears throat> Pes. So, of, of course, this has been translated from Google Translate. There may be a few linguistic mistakes here. Uh, you know, don't, don't kill the messenger. Uh, so here's their website again. I've already mentioned, we already gone over who are we, so let's take a look at the rest of it. What are we doing? So, Chetzipel Pes says that we are lobbying the government for common sense. Well, good luck with that. And common sense from the government? <laughs> Man, you got high hopes. Uh, we provide feedback to the government on their actions. We point to nonsensical measures. That's a lot of pointing. And together with experts, propose solutions to the situation. That sounds reasonable to me. Reasonable approach to solve a problem. Get some experts and propose solutions. Pfft, why not? Uh, we provide legal advice. Oh, that sounds great. We support failing businesses. Once again, sounds great. We give individuals the courage and energy to take further action. 
We organize public protests and support protesters. We are uniting the general public in a nationwide protest. Now, if you support free speech, if you support the right to publicly protest against a government, against authoritarianism, against tyranny, how could you be against this? Unless, well, you're a hypocrite. I mean, well, then, yeah, sure, you probably could be against this. Okay, fine. That's you. That's not me. I'm totally on board with this. If there's long, as long as they're being peaceful, no violence, they're not burning down buildings, they're not trying to kill people, they're not trying to beat cops to death, do it. Let's move on. So they say here, it's not just about our business anymore. It's about survival. We invite all entrepreneurs and our customers. Let us not let the situation go further. Let's unite. Let us communicate together and join our initiative. Let us seek a solution to the current situation together. How to do it? Number one, fly these state flags in your stores and home windows. Yes, there are people flying the check flag in front of their stores, in front of their restaurants, as a basically a symbol saying, hey, look, we're part of the, the, the group. We're part of the movement. Come on in. We're open. Uh, number two, keep your stores lit up so that at nighttime people can see, oh, the lights are on there. Hey, they must be part of that uh, dog group, right? And number three, open your business. Sign up. We'll send you a guide on how to do it. Turn your businesses into petition places. I mean, if that's the situation that the interior minister said, was that uh, political parties get to have meetings, political parties get to be in large groups. Well, if it's a an if your restaurant is an area, it's a location in order to sign government petitions. Well, then that's dealing with government, so it should it should be open. The government shouldn't have an argument against it. These restaurateurs are using the government's own argument against them. They're flinging it back in their faces as they should. But let's move on. With its trial and error actions, the government has literally put us in a position where we must actively defend ourselves. It is really about the... the sorry... Poor wording choice here. It is really about the literal survival of us entrepreneurs, but also of our employees and their families. In the spring, we followed all the government's decisions, but today we can no longer close without clear compensation packages. It would be the last final close. I'm guessing that's supposed to be something more like it would be the nail in the coffin, you know, uh, the, the the last straw. It's, Poor word choice here by Google Translate, but hey, it's better than nothing. Uh, the government needs to realize that quick aid in the space of a few days will cost the Treasury much less than rebuilding the market after a pandemic. Uh, yeah, sure will. That's a true statement. Where's the, where's the lie? <laughs> uh, I fear that we will experience a much worse wave of pandemics, poverty, unemployment, failing companies, and education. Once again, where's the lie? Hmm. Will it then cost us to build workhouses? Blah, 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 blah. Our only option is to provide 80% of sales from previous years quickly. I want to point this out again. Um, if you're someone who claims to be, oh, I want to help the poor, I want to help the little man, <sighs> you pretty much don't have a choice but to be okay with this movement. You have to be supportive of it because if the restaurants are all closing, if small cafes are all closing, if other small shops and businesses are closing, some hotels are closing, who works there? Who do you think are the most likely people that work in restaurants, small shops, hotels, etc.? <clears throat> Leftists, I'm looking at you. Single moms, maybe? Working at a restaurant or a bar as a waitress? Ooh, just maybe. 
What about those those immigrants that came to the to Europe a few years ago? Oh, probably working at maybe at some hotel where they don't have to speak the local language too much. They don't have to be on, you know, have great skills in Czech. And trust me, that ain't easy. Uh, so they could work at a hotel doing cleaning or something like that. Maybe work in the kitchen of a restaurant. Maybe work in the back stocking up at some grocery store. Not now. Not if all these places are closing. Who's the first person that's going to get fired? The lady that's been working there for 10 years at the grocery store? Or the 20-year-old kid who's trying to pay his way through university as an immigrant who's coming over on some visa? Sorry, immigrant kid. You're fired. <laughs> that's how it works. That's called, you know, the way an economy runs. So... If you are for these kinds of movements and you are against creating poverty, creating unemployment, creating failed companies and worse education, then you kind of have to be on board with these people and their movement. Sorry, if you're not, you're just a friggin' hypocrite. It's that simple. You choose. I know where I stand. You have to choose where you stand. It's that simple. It really is. So that's what's going on here in the Czech Republic. And the reason why I wanted to point this out um, is because this isn't the only place where it's happening. I'll do another video tomorrow uh, about something similar going on in Poland. Uh, by the way, I do live in Europe. I am an American, but I am living in Europe at the time. So um, I try to, t to stay abreast of news in Europe and the United States. Um, so I know what's going on over here. I know if I'm going to get screwed over by the EU or not. <clears throat> and sometimes, yes, I'm getting screwed over by the EU. So anyways, <clears throat> I thought this was very interesting. Um, I'm hoping it can be some kind of motivation, um, some sort of hope for other people out there. Those of you in the United States that feel hopeless right now after everything that happened at the end of 2020 and what's going on right now in 2021, I'm sure there are millions of you who feel hopeless. You're not alone. Even over here in Europe, they are feeling the squeeze and they are fighting back. The only way you can do anything about it is to unite, get together, talk to people in your community and find out ways you can legally peacefully protest what's happening in your community, fight back against this coronatarian <sighs> jackbooting, basically. Peacefully. Nonviolently. That's the key. If you start bringing weapons, I promise you, the U.S. military, the U.S. government has a lot more and a lot better. Okay, so just stay calm, do it the right way, and you can win. Well, that concludes this episode. I hope you all will like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, I remain the Neo-Bohemian. <laughs>